why are there so many different kinds of diagonals? I mean, all they do is bounce the image from one angle to another so they make it easier for you to see in a telescope, right? You have probably seen all kinds of different diagonals. Small ones, big ones, 45 degree ones, plastic ones, metal ones, and some of them called fancy things like enhanced mirror or uh, dielectric or prism. So let's take a quick look and see what the differences are. The first difference you're going to notice in a lot of them are this is a 45 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle. The 45 you usually see in spotting scopes or scopes that are meant to be used in the daytime viewing animals and stuff at a distance on the planet, not in outer space. The 90s, sometimes you see those, but usually the 90s are for things that you're looking up in space, you know, planets, stars, nebulas, you know, that kind of stuff. That's not always true, but you'll find that the vast majority of the time it is. The 45s are also usually prisms. What that means is instead of having a mirror in there, there's actually a prism. The prism does a couple of things. One, it makes it a 45 degree angle, makes that easier. The other problem or big difference, I should say, between the mirrors and the prisms are prisms tend to eat light. They tend to make the image darker and bright objects will tend to get spikes around them. So you don't get clean, sharp pinpoint stars, um, and even the moon can look a little weird. So for astronomy use, the 45s and prism versions are frowned on. But for daytime, awesome. Now, when you're talking about 90 degrees, the vast majority of these 90 degrees are simply a mirror down in the, the box here that reflects the image and there's nothing fancy about it. There are some things to watch out for, and there are some differences. The first, obviously, size, two inch versus inch and a quarter. But the big one for me is cheaper ones tend to be made out of plastic. The rings being made out of plastic is what's important. This box doesn't matter. The reason for that is when you go to tighten on an eyepiece using the little screw on the side, what you'll get is the plastic will either strip or crack. So you want the two tubes to be metal. The box can be plastic. That's fine. Then you get into little things like the quality of the mirror. So you have cheap, inexpensive mirrors. You have enhanced mirrors. And then they go all the way up to dielectrics. And the price can jump pretty substantially. So the difference here is... A regular cheap, still metal, 90 degree mirror is usually fairly good and probably most anybody who's got a beginner level or even intermediate level telescope, this is all they're ever going to need. An enhanced mirror diagonal, the mirror is better and it reflects a larger percentage of the light. So even with a cheap, you know, uh, very inexpensive still metal, uh, diagonal, you're going to get 90% or better of light transmission bouncing. Probably more like 93 to 95%. Okay. Enhanced mirrors are going to get you 95, 96, 97%. Dielectrics are going to get you 98, 99, 99.9. .9. So that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it can be. And the reason it can be is because when you're looking at extremely faint objects like nebula in particular, the difference in the amount of light can be substantial because they're almost impossible to see anyway. So you're trying to eke out just a teeny tiny bit more to add contrast to the scene so that you can see it better. Now, one thing I want to make sure I cover is when I'm talking about, you know, you get at least 90 from an inexpensive one on up, I'm talking about for name brand stuff. 
and name brand, you know, Celestron, Orion, Mead, any of those type people. I'm not talking about the, you know, $15 ones off of Amazon. You may only get 60, 70% off some of those. Some of those are horrible. They've got uh, plastic mirrors in them that, I mean, you can tell just by looking through them in daylight that there's a problem. But if you get a name brand, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars, but if you get a name brand that's in the, you know, 30, 40, $50 ballpark range, uh, that's probably all you will ever, ever need. The nice big ones can be well over a hundred and then even knocking on $200 door, but they are the, the top of the line. They will reflect 99.9% .9 of everything through them, some of them, and, uh, give you the best possible image quality. There's other things too, like how well they, uh, hold on to eyepieces and how they're designed. This one, for example, uses a brass compression ring to close in around the, the eyepiece, which really holds it nice and stable and tends to not scratch up and dent your expensive eyepieces. Whereas the less expensive ones will use just a screw that uh, threads in and goes up against the eyepiece, which can scratch the ring of the eyepiece and can hold it a little off center. That's being picky, but that's one of the things you pay for when you pay for really expensive ones. So I hope that's everything you ever needed to know about a diagonal. If you have any questions or anything, leave them down below. Be sure to subscribe and clear skies.